hands to make a dinosaur? What about those long feathers? Surprisingly, new experiments show that genetic engineering could give a bird scaly skin, just like a triceratops or a T-Rex. Matt Harris and John Fallon believe they have stumbled upon the genes that turn dinosaur scales into feathers. The first clue came when they began working with an ancient Chinese breed of chicken called a silky bird. The silky has primitive fluffy feathers, closer to what scientists believe feathered dinosaurs sported. But Fallon and Harris are struck by how this naturally occurring mutant bird is different from other birds. If you look at the normal bird, you can see the scales here. And if you look at the silky breed, what you see is there are feathers. Clearly, birds have the genes to make both. And there is another similarity between scales and feathers. But they are really made of the same protein, which is called keratin, the same as in our fingernails. Harris and others have already discovered that two genes orchestrate the complex development of feathers. On a hunch, he decides to try tricking a chicken's leg into growing feathers by turning on one of the feather-making genes before scales form. He coats the leg of the embryo with the protein that the gene would manufacture. Then he waits. The blue stain reveals the action of the gene in the chicken leg as primitive feathers develop. Harris and Fallon have made rudimentary feathers emerge instead of scales. So the first initial observation was just pure amazement. But I went and got John and he saw that and said absolutely. There was no question. The researchers are uncovering the precise genetic changes that took place as dinosaur scales evolved into feathers. Their experiments suggest that with modest tinkering, it may be possible to turn back the evolutionary clock and replace a bird's feathers with scaly skin like a dinosaur's. I would think as we learn more that we'll be able to do that. The genetic knowledge is there in the bird, and if we have it correct that the ancestors of the birds were scaly, then we should be able to induce scales on a bird. Another difference between dinosaurs and birds seems harder to reconcile. Dinosaurs have hands, while birds have wings. But Hans Larsen has found that they, too, are genetically similar. Dinosaurs closely related to birds have three really elongate fingers in their hands. So one, two, and three. And these fingers are very, very adapted for grasping and snatching prey. If we now compare this to modern birds, we see that they also have three fingers in their hand. We might not see this all the time, but here's one, two, three fingers. But they're highly modified for flight. We now know that we can trace the three fingers in the bird hand back to these three fingers in the dinosaur hand, both genetically and anatomically. Larson has little doubt that with more research, we'll be able to transform a bird's wing back into a dinosaur hand. Genetic experiments like these by Larson, Fallon, and Harris are untangling the evolutionary links between dinosaurs and birds. For most scientists, that's enough. But they also raise an intriguing possibility. If someone were crazy enough to try to create a proto-dinosaur from a bird, could they ever succeed? The possibility rests on the tremendous rate at which we are sequencing genomes, the full blueprint of an animal's DNA. Machines called sequencers are decoding the entire DNA map. We're even decoding individual genes. And we've not just decoded the human genome, but also horses, cats, dogs, mice, and the chicken. To make a dinosaur, Jack Horner would start with the genome of an emu. 
emus have all the features that that we could easily start with in order to make you know a velociraptor sized dinosaur big enough you know to already you already have the size the uh, Feathers that are very, very similar to the impressions of feathers that we find in China. If you look at the feet. They have scales. I mean, they're just, they're scaly feet. This is the dinosaur foot. If I was going to make a dinosaur, I'd start with this guy. Scientists would begin with the emu genome and add dinosaur traits. They could give an emu a tail, lengthen its arms and give it hands instead of wings. They could give it scaly bumpy skin or proto feathers like many raptors had. They could bulk up its leg muscles and even give it teeth and possibly the digestive system of a meat-eating modern bird, like a vulture. That, to me, is an animal that is going to look an awful lot like a dinosaur. We might call it an emuosaurus. But how different would Horner's creature be from an ancient dinosaur? It might slightly resemble the raptor Troodon. And the fossil record reveals evidence of bird-like behavior in dinosaurs, like tending eggs, flocking, and scavenging. Birds care for their young. Dinosaurs cared for their young. Birds are very social. Dinosaurs were very social. All the behaviors that we know of in dinosaurs are similar to what, what they are in birds. Hans Larsen believes that some new behaviors might even emerge on their own. Once we put a long tail on a, on a, let's say, an experimental bird embryo, its behavior might very well change to compensate for the long tail. It's not going to presumably get a smaller brain and, and have different sort of structure inside its brain and different connections the way that we think dinosaurs would have had. But it may alter its behavior ever so slightly just to accommodate its newfound body shape, which in turn might be the same pattern that dinosaurs would have done anyways. And its intelligence? Horner believes that the social complexity and smarts of dinosaurs were no greater than a bird's. If anything, some birds might be smarter. But could we ever truly build an emuosaurus? And if so, how? If we could create the genes of a proto-dinosaur, could we ever build one as they did in Jurassic Park? Mark Westhusen knows as much about creating life from DNA as anyone in the world. He and his colleague Dewey Kramer at Texas A&M University have cloned more species than researchers at any other laboratory. He loves these apples. They've cloned white-tailed deer, a black Angus bull, see, just a big baby, <laughs> and this cat, which now has kittens of her own. To make an emuosaurus, we would have to begin with an egg from an emu just as West Husen uses an egg from a cow. His team begins by placing the egg under a dissecting microscope and prepping a suction pipette. First, we'd have to remove the existing DNA. Next, we'd have to insert the artificial DNA into the emu egg. After that, we'd have a process where we'd actually fuse those two cells together so that we tra effectively transfer the chromosomes inside the cytoplasm of this egg. And then that egg will basically treat it um, as if it treats a sperm. We'd have to find just the right mix of chemicals to kickstart the fertilization process. And last, we'd implant the fertilized egg into an emu and hope that it will develop and hatch. But even this 
is not as easy as it sounds. 